Let's do a couple of disappearing hourglass quilt block variations, shall we? Let's go! So, have you ever done an hourglass quilt block? We've made one or two over the last year. One was Vlogmas actually. Don't know if you've watched it, but if you haven't, there's a whole playlist of quilt blocks for a Christmas sampler quilt that I think you'll love. But anyway, hourglass quilt blocks are very simple to do. So let's just go ahead and get two five inch squares in different colors. This is the one I picked and two five inch squares in our background fabric, which is usually white for me. So next step is something we have done so many times. We take a background fabric and you place it on top of the color fabric, just like so. And now we just pin the fabric to make sure it doesn't move. And now we just draw a diagonal line from one end to another. So we just get a pen. You can get anything because this line won't be showing once we're done. So a pen, a pencil, you know, a chalk a marker, whatever works for you is fine by me. And our next step is of course to sew on both sides of this line okay so let's do that and here we go nothing to it and now we need to cut the line and that gives us two half square triangles just like that not much of a surprise was it we have done this so so many times okay so now we just need to press these open real nicely seam to the dark side And now we could trim these, but I'd rather, you know, assemble our quilt block and then trim it, okay? So, this is what an hourglass quilt block looks like. You have probably seen it many, many times. And this is what it looks like. And now just let's just go ahead and sew, okay? And here we have it. Look how cute that is, guys. Our hourglass quilt block ready to go. Okay, so now it's time to trim and we want this block to be ideally nine inches or 825 or seven and a half in total so we can cut it into threes without having to do a lot of math, okay? So hopefully ours will be nine. Yeah, we can make it nine. So four and a half. Let's just go ahead and trim. And that's it. <laughs> but that's not what we're doing here today. Today we are making variants. So let's make this quilt block disappear. Haven't done it in a while. <laughs> okay, for our first variant, we just need to go ahead and cut this into nine equal squares. Okay, so three, 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 three. And uh, yes, I have ordered a lazy Susan mat. I'm not sure that's how it's called. I'm waiting on it any day now, and I think that's just going to make life so much easier for myself. Do you know what it is? Those Lazy Susans where you have like um, a mat and it just rolls, so I can cut it like this, then I turn around, cut it, turn around, instead of having to do all the gymnastics I'm about to do to get it to cut without the fabric moving. So, and then, because I don't have my Lazy Susan yet, Oops, let me just make sure it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to make a little bit more. And this is where the blade sometimes runs away from me. Hopefully that will all end once my Lazy Susan arrives. I love that name, by the way. It's a rotating cutting mat, actually. Okay. So this is cut into nine squares, and now we play. So I'm gonna leave this one as is. I'm just going to switch these around, like so. Hmm. Well, I guess it makes more sense if I do it like, oh, this one moved, like, this, I guess, but we want to change this one too so we don't have the pink matching the pink because that would just make it another variant. 
So, do you see this lovely little cross we have right here? How cool is this? We could have made it... Yeah, mm, maybe like... How would it work if it did it like this? Would it look more of a cross? Maybe. Let's see. Oh, not a cross. <laughs> I think I got ahead of myself. That's actually another one of the variants I wanted to make. But uh, yeah, let's start with this one. Look at that, guys. It is a square within a square, patchwork square. You know, a diamond, like a patchwork diamond within a quilt block. How cute is this? I'm very happy with this. Let's sew this one, okay? And here we have it guys our first variation it is looking lovely so this is seven and three quarters we went from a nine inch hourglass to a seven and three quarter um, quilt block and I love it I think it is the cutest little thing <laughs> I love this one okay guys let's move on okay guys so here we have our next hourglass quilt block and as you can see it's pretty colorful i love this color combo and let's see what we can do next uh let's uh move things around a little bit here we always want to mismatch the center with the ends i think it just looks cuter this way to be honest and now we want to so this is pretty much the one we've just made, right? So now we just want to turn the corners around a little bit. That's not gonna work. So the yellow, the blue, the yellow, and the blue again. And this should give us a nice little cross. Do you see? The cross I was trying to make the first one <laughs> that I just ended up doing something else, yeah. So here is our sort of cross. This makes a stunning, an absolutely stunning quilt block once we're done. Gosh, I mean, ah, oh, I love this. Who knew our glass quilt blocks could be so versatile, right? <laughs> Each one is just more awesome than the next. So let's just sew. Here we go. Let's press. And now we trim. And this is it. And now all we need to do is marvel at what our hourglass quilt block variation can make once it's all together. Look at that, guys. Just look at it. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Okay, guys, moving on. Here's our next hourglass, kind of carrot looking, <laughs> but still cute, really, really cute. And it's already cut into nine. Uh, I think all our variations today will be, will start this way. And then, you know, for part two, I'll cut it, you know, in different ways so we can have a little bit more fun. So let's see what we have here. What if we do like this and maybe like this? So for the colors, we go colored and for the white, we go white. Look at that, how cute is that? It's like arrows pointing towards the middle. I mean, how many steps did it take to make something completely new and completely awesome? It wasn't really that hard, was it? <laughs> and for this one, we didn't move uh, the core. If we moved the center, if we moved the center, it would look like this. But for me, that's, a, oh, that's cute too, actually. Hmm. Now I have uh, doubts. <laughs> That's the problem with playing. If you play too much, you stop knowing what to do. 
So do we leave it like this? Do we go like this? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna stay with the arrows, but this is pretty awesome too. Oh, this is so cute. Oh gosh, the variants. <laughs> I have to say, you know, doing these kinds of videos, it's always so much fun because it always surprises me. I have a couple of things, you know, planned. I kind of know what I'm going to do for the most part, but then I start to play and I start, you know, testing stuff out and I'm always very pleasantly surprised. And this was it. This really was. <laughs> Let's go. What do you think guys? How cute will this look once we start playing with it and uh, seeing all the combos we can do with it? I think this will be surprising. I think this will be so much more awesome than we can ever imagine by just looking at the quilt block and its own. And that's just a different kind of magic with sewing as far as I'm concerned. You know, I have always said that sewing was magical. But ever since I started doing this, these combinations, uh, it's actually a lot of fun too. I just sit in my computer with the quilt block and imagine all kinds of possibilities. And I always end up uh, finding more than I had anticipated, much like we do when we're doing the variants and we're playing with our variants. I always end up finding other stuff that makes me really, really happy. Here we go, number Three, our arrow, our pointy arrow, <laughs> our glass, quilt block, variant, our little carrot. Oh, it looks like a carrot. Yeah, look, carrot and the leaves and the carrot and the leaves. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I love this, guys. I really do. <laughs> Okay guys, so let's do another one and I have picked pretty strong fabrics for this one. Let's see if I don't regret it. Uh, I am trying to make um, an eight of sorts or you know that infinite sign, you know that one? That's what we're trying to, mm, okay, I can see it already, see our eight over here. Um, yeah, I think I didn't really do myself any favors by uh, by choosing such colorful fabrics, but I will do my best. So yeah, this isn't working as well as I hoped, <laughs> but hopefully we'll be able to get something out of this. Hmm. Wait, I think it works better like this. And yeah, that helps form it for sure. Um, maybe if we did. Is this confusing? Even more, maybe. Okay. Can you see the pattern or is it all over the place for you? Uh, yeah, we have, so this right here, that's obvious. We have this one right here, but what I wanted you to see was actually the H shape. And I'm not sure we can see that. Hmm. Mm. If we mix it like this, Oh, that helps. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Does it help? Oh, I'm not sure it does. Does it help like this? Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> well, I can see it, but I don't think if you, I don't think you can see it though. Mm. I do like it. I think it's cute. What do you say? Shall we sew it like this and see? Yeah. 
and see what we get when we do it all together. Yeah, what the heck, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so this is what we have. Can't wait to see what it will look like once it's combined. I think this one is very promising, guys. Very promising indeed. And as usual, I have no names for these quilt blocks. I have no idea what they're called. I don't even know if they have a name. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any idea about the names for any of these, please let me know. I would love to know what they're called because honestly, I, I don't. I just start playing, see where it gets me, you know, You've seen the process. You know how <laughs> completely arbitrary this is, right? We just go with the flow and we stop at something we like. And that's pretty much how we do it. So this one is done. It is our fourth. And this is what it looks like combined. Oh, <laughs> I knew this was promising. Oh, so, so cute. Okay, guys, and this is our last variant. I am out of hourglass quilt blocks to disappear. <laughs> and if I'm honest with you, I don't really know if I am making um, a cross or a star. Wait, so first things first, let's turn this in. Just like that. And this gives us a star, right? This is pretty obviously a star. Particularly if we go ahead and add these fabrics. So you know, clearly a star and you know how much I love stars, but it can be a cross if we make it like this. Um, maybe like this would be better. Look at how cute this cross looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, I really did save the best ones for last. So, cross or star, what shall we do? Uh, who am I kidding? I love stars. <laughs> You know that. I'm just gonna have to make it a star. I can't help myself. There is no way I'm going to ever have a chance to make a star and do something else because stars, they're gorgeous. Let's sew guys for the very last time. And here's our tiny red and blue star. I love red and blue. Probably noticed it is one of my favorite combinations for quilt blocks. I just think it really, really works. Let's trim. And here we go guys, our lovely, lovely, disappearing hourglass quilt block variant turned into a star. It is absolutely gorgeous. And now let's see how this works all combined. Stars always do it for me. <laughs> I am a sucker for anything that is star, you know, shaped. <laughs> And that's it guys, who knew hourglass quilt blocks could be, you know, this versatile. There are uh, probably more variants I could make, but we'll stop with this and um, maybe do a part two. <laughs> we are done for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I had a blast making it. I think that was obvious. Thank you for keeping me company and I'll see you really, really soon. Bye bye.